one that we've wanted to do for a very long time. Uh, the information you'll learn today is critical to your formula for success. And we've talked about this in a lot of other webinars, and it's, it's really about the formula. Not that printing is difficult, but if you are missing some key elements of this formula, then, um, then you might not be producing the best results. So what are some, some parts of that formula? You have the garment, you know, what shirt are you printing on or what substrate are you printing on? That's critical. We've talked about the, the different ones that work and don't work in other webinars. We've talked about the pre-treat process and a plug for our next webinar, which is on Thursday. Roy and I are going to be doing an in-depth webinar on proper pre-treating. And so that's- And that's gonna be live, Jeff. That's gonna be live. Don't forget that's, that's a live point. here in our, in our office. Not that this isn't live, but what I mean is we're gonna actually be showing a camera <laughs> on the equipment. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I mean, it's like, hey, wait, live, duh. Uh, pre-treating live and, and, and showing the pre-treater and, and, and how to properly pre-treat. Um, hey, and don't forget, Jeff, we've done some smart marketing. So even in terms of a system, in terms of a formula, Terry and I kicked this off not to, you know, not to reach over my shoulder, pat myself on the back. Um, it was actually Terry's idea that we do a smart marketing. So how, how, do, we, how do we effectively market in, in situations like this, which are so uncertain, but thank you. Sorry. Just want to give a shout out to Terry. Since he's yeah, back to that formula, you got the garment, you got the pre-treat, you got the printer, and then you have the software that's running the printer and, and getting your settings set properly. And, and something that we're going to talk about too, is not uh, overdoing it on your settings. A lot of times, you know, people think I, I just need to crank up the ink on this and, and we're going to, go over a lot of that and, and what is the perfect setting to get a great print at the best price. Perfect. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Roy and Roy's going to, to jump into garment creator. And we have a lot of pictures and samples to show you too, based on those settings. So Roy, take it away. All right, here we go. <laughs> Can you see the screen? Okay. Yes. Looks great. All right. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do is just go through the basic controls up here. Um, obviously a new document opening, um, an item. So if I wanted to go ahead and open an item, um, uh, like this here, or actually I want to start out with something else real quick. So right now, Roy, you just brought in uh, a graphic actually, that's all black. Yeah. Actually, I am uh, looking for a different one. Got too many screens open. And, and what file type are you looking to import when you do this, Roy? Um, actually, the best file type is a PNG to bring in. Sorry about the technical difficulty here. Keep calm, Roy. Just keep calm. That's right. I'm keeping calm. And be ready. There we go. So I wanted to go through some basic controls, obviously opening a file. Sorry about that. I brought this one up specifically so we can review some of the controls over here for color replacement. Just in case you got something like this from a customer. Um, We'll go ahead and reduce the size of this first, which we can do on the page layout. Um, I can do it via center, top center, decide what my distance is from the top, and put that in there. And then I basically just work off of uh, garment uh, image width versus the length, because the length's going to vary, but the width is more critical than the length depending on the size of the shirt. So, What's the maximum imprint area, Roy? On this particular platen is uh, 14 by 16. So I could actually 
clicked on this button and fit fit button. Gotcha. On that. Or I can go back to 11.5. Now, as far as color replacement, it's a nice tool to have. If I have a white background like this, I can easily click here and take that white background out. But you see it didn't take it completely out. So we can go back here and get rid of that and uncheck this. This is my color tolerance on how many gradations of that color I'm gonna move up the scale. So since it's only two colors, it really doesn't matter. But if I'm trying to isolate a color, I can put a smaller number. Only neighboring areas, anything that's gonna have an outline on it, um, that's where it's gonna stop at. So I'm gonna uncheck that so I can take every white out of this document and then it turns everything black. Oh, cool. So, so since it, this is a took out the black of the shirt, the centers of those obviously, letters. Obviously, I can't go black type, so I can change all that to white just by clicking on these two black variations. And then I could go ahead and print that. Now, if I wanted to change something to a specific color, um, I do have... Let's see here, I'm going to go back and come back. I do have a color swatch here. So let's say for instance, I wanted to make a color on here or pick one out out of the rainbow and then find my density that I wanted to use. I can easily click on my color and then change just that one item. That is super cool. So that's not gonna take the place or replace Photoshop, but how handy is that? Those two moves that you just did to be able to swap the color to be able to drop out the transparent background or was actually not a transparent background. You made a transparent background. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, Roy, I have a follow-up question for you about when you imported that file, we, we talked about the best file format was to import a PNG. Mm -hmm. And that's because a PNG can give you that transparent background, but what you imported did not. So was that a JPEG or a TIFF? We have a question. No, it was a PNG that I deliberately made a white background on purpose to do this demonstration. Yeah, not all PNGs are transparent. Only the best PNGs are transparent. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, no, you get to pick, and it defaults to transparent usually when you save them, but I deliberately change it to white so I can go through this process. Okay. Uh, I think the key thing is, is if I'm going from shirt color to shirt color, and I have a basic design of just type, it's easy to go in and switch, switch that type for a different color depending on the color of the shirt. Oh, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Rather than have to go all the way out, find a different file, re change it in software, and then re-import it. You're working from within Garment Creator in one shot. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm gonna go ahead and open a new file here. And do it a different way. Make it easier. So while you're doing that, Roy, I just want to follow up on a couple of questions keep coming in about that file format. Um, somebody asked if you can do a PDF or a JPEG. You know, what about TIFFs? All those you can import, right? Um, TIFF, JPEG, and PNG are the number one files. You can't do a a Photoshop native document or Illustrator or any other program. It's got to be one of those three formats generally. Okay, and, and for Kathy asked the question, would an EPS or CDR file work? No, but if you're in CorelDRAW, what you're going to do is export it as a PNG, which will save it with that transparent background so that when you import it, it'll look like what you have here where it doesn't have that white box around it. That would be true with all of your software, right, Roy? So if I were in Illustrator, if I were in Photoshop, mm -hmm. if I were in CorelDRAW, I would want to finish all of my work and then save as or export as a PNG file with a transparent background. That's correct. And that's correct. Did you hear that, Jeff? He said that's yeah. correct. You yeah. got one right, Jay. And typically a PNG is going to be working in an RGB format. So... Um, it, that format actually works better with the colors on this uh, machine as well. 
So even though there's uh, yellow, magenta, cyan, and black installed in the printer, it still interpolates the colors under RGB. The other thing I wanted to do is a lot of people are trying to match colors, and that's difficult to do depending on the color of the shirt. Not all black shirts are black. Some are, are blue charcoal gray, some have a blue tinge to them, some have a brown tinge. Um, so that's gonna change the outcome of what you're gonna end up with. So this is a really good tool to use, is to import a chart. Uh, if I have a black t-shirt, I can import this chart. And this chart's going to give me all the colors with an RGB callout. So when I'm creating my artwork, if I want to get closer to a specific color, I could use that RGB number and create a custom number that I'm going to end up printing on the shirt and it's going to come out exactly like it did in the sample. And the same thing holds true for a white garment. There is a white t-shirt one. So um, we have one here that has a uh, print on one side that's pre-treated and then a print on the other side unpre-treated for a light gun. Is why that why is thing? that an advantage, Roy? Why would that make sense to have both of those printed in your shop? Well, on an unpre-treated and pre-treated white garment, the color is going to change based on uh, the way the ink's absorbing into the fabric on the unpre-treated shirt. Awesome. I know you guys are going to go into that in deeper detail on Thursday, but I, I, I've seen you do this. I've seen Jeff do this. I've seen Terry do this at trade shows and we show people these shirts and they're blown away by the difference, you know? So it's, it's also um, important when you see what that actually looks like on a black t-shirt or on a Navy t-shirt or on an athletic gray t-shirt, super important to have those samples. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, I'm going to try to just as if there's any other questions while we're in this area. Jeff, you want to check the chat? Yeah, so we've answered a couple of these. We have the question, is a PSD file compatible SVG? No, but when you are in Photoshop and you're in Illustrator and you're in CorelDRAW, you're going to export it as a PNG file. Um, so yeah, those, those file import questions keep coming up, but I think we've covered that. Um, yeah, I think the best one is just stay with PNG. It's just easier to just stay with one format. Yeah. Especially if you're the one creating the artwork or if you're requesting artwork from your customer, uh, PNG is, is more of a universal format as well, kind of like uh, uh, getting a PDF file Mm -hmm. from somebody to open up? So Roy, I know I've had this question in the past and others have since asked here in the chat. The preview that we're seeing on your screen is just that. It's just a preview. It is not a high resolution, high quality file. It's just giving us a visual so we know which file it is and where that location will land. So if it looks a little blurry or pixelated, that is not how it's going to print, correct? That is correct. Now, you can change that under your configuration here. If I click here, I can go in here and change the resolution of what I'm going to end up with under your preview quality here. So it's kind of middle of the road, and I have tried the highest quality here, which gives you a sharper image, but that every time you do something, it has to refresh kind of like in Photoshop when you, you're changing a big file. Yeah. And it just slows down the process. So typically I just go with the standard default. And then as far as the other controls up here, um, saving a job uh, to work data uh, or in, to include work data, uh, this would include any settings that you've changed in here, like those color replacement settings on the last file, uh, my layout settings, uh, my print settings. So when I do save a file that way, I can open it up and reprint it, or I can open it up and change the size depending on what size garment I'm going to, That's or rotate thing. the image if I'm going to a hoodie and I'm trying to fit it on a specific 
uh, flatten, I can rotate an image and move it down to put my hood over here and my pocket over here. And um, on a large adult, you can fit that on the standard 1416 flatten. So from a large adult on up, you can, uh, you know, get 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 by with the 1416, and then uh, if you're going to do smaller ones, just give us a call, and we can order the smaller flats from us. And then uh, there's the other save image only. Uh, that's just going to save the image, which you've already got it saved when you imported it. And if you wanted to export a file, what this does is pre-print the file or save it as a print file uh, to your computer desktop, or you can put a USB flash drive in here and do that. And that way you can plug it directly into the printer, uh, giving you the ability to uh, just print on the fly. On the so printer. in that case, if I can jump in for a second, Roy, you could save this onto a jump drive. Somebody else could be using Garment Creator, like Jeff is in another room. He could be fixing the file, setting the file, making it all sized appropriately print it or save it to a jump drive, hand that off to an operator, he goes back to the next print, the operator starts working on that job. Is that why, is that why this is available? Uh, that's one reason. The other reason is if somebody has the printer somewhere that they can't get to it from the computer, typically, okay. or um, the situation where they have staff that they don't want in the computer setting up the files, they can just have everything on the drive and bring up the jobs individually. The only thing with that, you would have to have a file saved for each size uh, of shirt. So if you're doing you know, a spread of shirt sizes, like small to large on adult and then an extra large on up to double X or something and then go you know, to the larger size and then use sizes as well. I don't, it depends on how you wanna situate your size on um, gotcha. the width of the garment. Uh, the other thing is, is if you want to add multiple images, you can do that um, by going to that screen there. And this allows you to um, add type right here. So if I want to add a line of type, I can do that. Um, or, you know, whatever. I'm doing. So if I want to do something like that, I can move that down below and I can put in, if you're doing testing, this is a great screen to use because what I do is I'll reduce my images down to where I can fit them into one corner here and then I'll out output multiple settings and I'll make notes of what those settings were here. And also I make a list of what the cost actually is too because every time you change something, it's going to change the cost. When you change the size, when you change the location, when you change the setting, you mean? Exactly. Every setting is going to uh, constitute a new price. Roy, I might be asking a nitpicky question, but when you brought that file into size, and then if you were to shrink it down into the upper left quadrant like you did, are, mm -hmm. are, those, are those pixels actually getting smaller and that resolution could be a little bit better when you, when you resize it down? Uh, no, it's just the same thing. Okay. It well, doesn't change the preview, uh, the way the file is previewed. It might look like it's better. Shrinking when, you, when you actually print it, it could slightly be improved. But it's still pixelated. Okay, gotcha. So, so question uh, in the reverse of that, Roy. Let's say you started out with a, an image about that size and then you expanded it. Somebody asked this question. If you did a fit to um, platen with a smaller image, um, it's my experience that that affects the output, correct? Because you're spreading out that resolution. So if you had a, a low resolution or small file to start with and you make it bigger, you're just spreading out those pixels. Well, that is correct. But ultimately, if you're not ending up with the right file to begin with, you want to make sure you save your files properly and size them appropriately. So when you're creating your files, I would probably stay somewhere between a nine and 12 inch width of your design and save the file that size. Unless you're doing a vector file for line art, like that uh, Keep Calm one that I did. And then when you convert it to the PNG, 
you want to do it at the larger size as well. That way, when you go down or go up, it's not going to have a little change. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I made it like a posted stamp and it was one inch by one inch and I enlarged it, I could have a problem. So <laughs> You would definitely, definitely have a problem. Definitely don't want to do that. But let's say, for instance, this is an another reason why the, I'd want to use this screen is if I'm going to put more than one image. Say I'm going to put a logo up here in the corner and then I'm going to put a bigger print down here. I can print it in one pass versus doing multiple passes. And then once I click OK, it actually takes my 14 by 16 platen and that's my new document size. So everything is connected together as I move it around onto the screen and position it where I want. So not to spend too much time on that screen, but that's a good way to do tests when you're doing different uh, formats or, or different uh, uh, print settings. Yeah, I think you guys were talking about this earlier. I don't know if you're gonna, if you're planned on this now, but uh, Roy and Jeff, the, the the opportunity to see side by side settings and comparison, so that you can say this was this was standard setting level three, this was, you know, level five, and then you're able to look at that judgment of quality and price. Mm -hmm. Makes exactly. a ton of sense to me. Yeah, when uh, you're looking at, I mean, if you just want to get a cheap shirt out, you can definitely do that. But I think reverting back to what Jeff, uh, Jeff was saying earlier, Thursday is going to kind of coincide with today. Because if you don't start out with a good shirt to begin with, a lot of the settings are a moot point. So, and I will talk about that as I go down the settings. Wait, 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 Jeff, what did he just say for clarification? Could you repeat that one more time, Jeff? <laughs> You don't start out with a good quality shirt, then uh, it's a moot point, he said. Hmm. Yeah. And if you're not pre-treating properly, it's a moot point. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to me how much chatter there is negatively on forums about how crappy Garment Creator is. And when you get to the root of the problem, it not, has nothing to do with Garment Creator. It has everything to do with the graphic, the brand of the shirt, the, you know, how the shirt was made, what kind of shirt it is, and then, and then pre-treatment. It's like, okay, you want to criticize this thing over here, but you haven't dealt with the underlying principles and issues. And anyway, I know you guys are going to get into that Thursday, but yeah. no problem. So basically these are just shortcuts to the same screens as we were doing up here, uh, different view modes, um, job estimate, uh, history, or I can click here for my history. So anything that I've actually printed already, I can go through and look at and just keep going through my page after page after page. If there's something you want to go back to and reprint, you can easily bring it up if you, you know, depending on how much uh, allocation of memory you have set. Jeff, is that a big deal, that job history? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if, when you're in production and you want to go back and find um, a graphic that you printed for a client, you want it to be exactly the same because they ordered 25 shirts, right? Ding, ding, and ding, then ding. they get them and they and they have one more person join the group and they need one more shirt you can just go back and, and hit it and it looks exactly like all the others okay and then obviously uh, your configuration again and help menu uh, obviously job estimation if you haven't set that up uh, you can do that just by setting up your US currency here ink cost uh, 36 cents a milliliter on this area. You can put as many things as you'd like. You just continue to add and add. You can put labor costs, hoodie costs, um, pre-treatment costs, pre-treatment costs, and you, everything you put a check mark next to is going to incorporate into the cost when you do your job estimate. So, Roy, if I drink a monster uh, with every job I print, <laughs> I could add it to this cost estimator. The overhead exactly. of the monster. Wow. Okay. Whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah, you can throw that's the two that's bucks in there. For the all right. All right. Now you, you're getting a little sassy. You're starting to sound like me. Let's let's give it back to Roy. So basically, um, we're going to go into the settings now. Awesome. Um, as far as the settings you get with Garment Creator, uh, these are basically them. There's two dark shirt settings, one light shirt setting. Uh, and one dark colored t-shirt white. 
So if I, and then there's also this light colored t-shirt high speed color mode. Uh, any of you that got your printer, there's uh, two charts on the doors when you open them up. One of them consists of two magentas and two cyan. So if you set up your machine for just color output, no white ink, uh, oh. you can use this high speed color mode feature, which allows you to print a lot faster. So Ron, are you, are you going to highlight each one of those briefly or, or could you give us a little description of what? Yes, I'm going to go through these. This is probably the bulk of what we're going genius. to talk about. Genius. Yeah, this is exactly. a great webinar. So I'm excited. This mode is not available for a white ink printer, FYI. Okay. So we're looking at the uh, dark colored t-shirt uh, used garment black, dark colored t-shirt standard. So if I'm printing on a black shirt, you would automatically think, well, you know, I'm going to use the black shirt as my black uh, because that's going to save me money on the white base as well as the black ink that's going to go on top of that white base. But that's not necessarily true. When it comes to certain images, which I'll show you here, a, a sample of, um, there's going to be times where you want to go ahead and use the standard using the black ink. And then there's times that you'll definitely use the shirt as your black. I would say 85, 90% of the time, garment black would be the way to go on a black t-shirt. So let me uh, pull up a sample here real quick. Maybe go to another screen. So let me scroll through this for a second. This would be a reason to use garment black or to use the standard setting. If you all can see these two motorcycles here. So that's exactly the same graphic. And the only thing you've done is change the settings. Exactly. I'm using my shirt black on the one on the left and the one on the right, I'm printing black ink. So you see all the detail that you lose on yeah, all the significantly better on the tires and what have you. Uh, you get a little better shadow in the, you know, the mountains and what have you. But uh, other than that, the uh, colors are pretty much the same on the rest of the, the uh, output. But uh, the motorcycle is definitely a big indicator of wanting to use the um, uh, standard with black ink. Now, this one would be complete opposite. Forgive my artwork here, but these two examples definitely accentuate the two differences. That's why I have them. If you look at the girl on the left, uh, that one is using garment black, but you could see that her hair pops out a little bit more as well as her limited clothing there. And the guitar strings uh, also show up using garment black. And on the one on the right, it's a little modeled and you're losing a lot of that detail. So this would be a reason definitely, which is most instances, is that you want to use a uh, garment black when you're putting on a black shirt. Okay. Roy, will there be any other uh, PG-13 video photos we need to be aware of? No, that's okay. the only one. No, those are really good examples, though. And, it, and, and I think, Jeff, you were talking about this earlier, about the balance between style preference and price like something might look a certain way but cost a little bit more but be worth it and in other times it might not matter yeah. how, how well, do we know though how do we know that from a salesman point of view when you're selling your shirts okay because you're all in sales too you're in production you're in sales you're running the whole business whatever um when you look at those sample shirts that he did side by side it's clear which shirt looks better but if your client doesn't see both of those shirts side by side, let's say you show them the one with the black shirt showing through, they may look at that and go, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This looks perfect. Thank you. Here's your money. And that costs you less to print. So that goes back to the balance. Are you looking to print perfect artwork? So every client's going to be a little different. Every yeah. job is a little bit different and you just have to determine does this job require these higher settings, these better settings that might cost a little bit more in production? Or is my client gonna be extremely happy 
and I'm going to save a little bit of money in the ink. So when you say a little bit, we're talking costs. I mean, Jeff, Roy, you know way better than I do. Are we talking like $3 difference, a dollar difference, 10 cents difference? I mean, what, give me a range. I know it would, I know it would be dependent upon the graphic and every time it would be different, but is there a range? Well, if there's a uh, black in there. It's hard to say really, yeah. because it depends. Like this specific graphic is a solid flood of ink. So this is going to be more expensive. This is going to be on the high end. So we can look at some costs on this one, changing it around oh, a little bit. Okay, well, I, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, which is, which is probably the case. So I didn't mean to steal your thunder there. No, right? that's okay. That's, not still, that's a good question. But uh, so anyway, getting back up to, to the different settings. Yep, those let's cover that. The difference is if I go and explain use garment black or standard, everything else below is going to be the same. Uh, the other one is dark colored t-shirt white. So if I wanted to use something like this, it's gonna create a grayscale image, which might be a cool effect for some people. But the biggest reason to use this mode would be to, uh, as I change that uh, keep calm to white, say I'm just printing white ink on a shirt, uh, this will give me my white ink in a single pass versus uh, doing the white face first and having the machine wonder if there's gonna be a color pass uh, coming through or it's going to just sit and then go with no no color at all. So that would be uh, a good reason to use this mode. Getting back to the dark colored t-shirt modes, uh, since we are doing this design and I have a couple samples here, we'll just go with the standard. Uh, the first thing is looking at these uh, underlying blue da areas. I always tell people, open these up so you can see what's happening. Uh, so level three is your standard default. You're gonna be running at 1440 by 1440, eight passes, and then you're gonna do a double strike print, which that's why that check mark's there. And that's gonna re, uh, basically tell you that any highlight white, like the tires, if I had some type down here, or any areas that have a heavy coverage of white, it's going to cover that area again on the second pass with the color. Okay. Now the quality of the color print is going to be 720 by 720 and it's going to do four passes. The one thing to keep in mind is the passes. Every time the head goes back and forth one time, like it goes from left to right once and then back the other direction, that is considered a pass. So it's going to put a little drop of ink based on the size of droplets to create the end spot size of the, sh the color of the shirt or the design that is built up. It's really an, an optical illusion of a series of dots across this whole image that you, if you take a, a magnifying glass or a high powered loop, you could see all those dots on the fabric. So every time I do a pass, it slows the speed down. And it also increases the amount of ink that I'm putting on the shirt, which increased the cost. So when we go from there to level four, uh, I basically increased my color quality now. I went 1440 to 728 passes. Uh, why would I wanna do that? If I'm printing something with fine detail, this specific design doesn't really matter, but say people are starting to print photographs on shirts things with uh, you know, a lot of detail they want to show, I definitely would want to push my uh, color quality up to the uh, 1440, 728 pass. I can customize and go beyond that if I want to as well. Uh, and then level five is staying at the same quality here of color, but I brought back my uh, highlight white. On my level four, I lost my highlight white. So I saved a little bit of money there and added a little bit of money here. And then on the quality six, I don't have the double strike print because I'm actually putting down two bases of white. Uh, so I'm doing the eight passes two times. And then I have the same color quality as level five and level four. So basically the, the most common settings that I would use, and this reverts back to again, uh, shirt is a major factor. So if I have a 
shirt that is a low quality, very thick, loose weave on the shirt, that's going to require more ink and more free treat. So even if I do a level three, that shirt may not work well. Did you have a question there? Uh, several people in the chat have asked about, they're seeing settings on your screen that they don't have. So they're wondering, is it because they have an F2000 or because yes. they have an older version of Garment Creator or possibly both? Could you clarify possibly that for us? Possibly both. They have an F2000, uh, which I can touch on that in a minute after we finish with this one. Okay. I have those settings that I can bring up on the screen. Jeff, where do we go to get a current version of Garment Creator? In your Garment Creator, there's uh, an option to set, to set it to do automatic updates. And by the way, Garment Creator is always free. So if you're brand new to this, um, I know that I have uh, a few clients in here that are, are just purchased and are waiting to get their printer. Garment Creator is always free. And the updates and the upgrades are always free. So just set it to the automatic updates. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Roy. Rehydrating. No problem. Um, so basically, we do have below our level three quality, uh, a level two, which basically on the level two, I have the same uh, quality of my white base as the level three, but I'm going to reduce the quality of my color base or my color that's going to go on top of the white by 720 by 360 and I'm only going to do two passes. This is a very fast print mode. So if you want a down and dirty t-shirt uh, on this specific design, I did a cost comparison between level three and level two and it was about 70 cent difference uh, running this at 11 and a half inches long, which is a pretty considerable amount of ink and, and cost. Uh, but if you're looking for something that's going to pop off the shirt and you're going to sell your shirts at a higher cost, obviously you'd want to go at the level three and not the level two. Um, you know, depending on what market you're in. I mean, if you're competing with uh, some of the lower end shirt costs, then obviously you want to get the, the cheapest cost possible. And then they also have the level one, which I'm using a high quality t-shirt here, which is a cotton heritage, a combed ring spun cotton shirt, a uh, very tight weave. It doesn't even require as much pre-treat. We can uh, crank that back just a little bit on that shirt. So we save money there and we get a pretty consistent um, lay down of ink and good coverage, which I'll show you uh, a little bit later of how the white base lays down, which is critical to the end result of the job. So I did print uh, some samples at uh, level one and they looked, I wouldn't sell them myself, but that's just me. Sorry if I'm giving you my opinion here, but. Uh, Your opinion I, counts, uh, Roy. Your opinion matters. <laughs> okay, I'll show you uh, some examples of that in a second here. I just want to give you guys an update. We're at, we're at 45 minutes after the hour, so. Okay. Well, it's going to be pretty easy to cruise through the rest of it. But uh, and, I'm not, and I'm telling, I'm not telling you to go faster. I'm just giving you the update. I know there's been a lot of good it. questions too. Yeah. So yeah, we want to make sure uh, we cover everything uh, in a timely manner, but the level three, this is a standard level three and this is a level two. The difference between the two, it's hard to see on this photograph here that I imported into this document. Um, it's a little bit better coverage of color and the color pops on the three a little bit more, but the two is, is definitely sellable. And then you can see here on the level one, and on this one I did the level one and increased the uh, color setting. Uh, in order to get a little bit more saturation, which it shows it uh, brightens it up a little bit here. Yeah, the reds are a little darker and deeper. The color's better on that. But typically, I mean, I wasn't really pleased with the level one. And like I said, I'm using a high quality shirt. If you try to throw a guild in or something like that in here, you couldn't even go below a level three uh, and get a good print. In fact, 
a lot of people are pushing above a level three because they can't even get a good uh, coverage on the shirt to begin with. The we hear that so often. I, I, Jeff, I know you were going to talk to this about people going beyond level three, going to level five because they're trying to satisfy the, the inadequacies of a low grade shirt. Yeah. And as you talk about increasing your ink on a guild end, don't forget when you're talking about that, you're doing a, what, what will help you rather than increasing the ink is doing a double pre-treat. So not all substrates work the same. That goes back to our formula. You know, there's, there's different parts of this and we'll talk more about uh, pre-treating on Thursday. Okay. So let me go back to the other screen here. So basically when it comes to uh, back to level three, where we're at here. Um, that would be the standard default when you got a good quality shirt, but we can go as high as a level six. I always hear people saying, God, there's people out here that are doing shirts and they cost seven to $10. I've never printed a shirt that costs that much money, but I can show you how that's accomplished. Uh, level six, increasing my color quality to the highest setting and then I can change my density on my white and my color to 100%, which I'm just oversaturating, uh, excuse me, oversaturating the uh, shirt with ink, which is counterproductive. But if I go ahead and just do a job estimate, uh, estimation on this, well, wow. that's coming up, Roy. I just want to point something out about that. When I was pretty new to this game and I fell into the, uh, the trap of more ink is better, I printed some shirts for myself by putting down a ton of white ink. And what happens is they don't, they don't last as long. They don't wash as good because there's just too much ink on there and uh, it takes longer to cure. So more is not better in this situation. And, and by the way, I, I saw the shirts you printed out at level three with this graphic. I was super impressed. I think if you added more ink to it, they would actually look worse. And well, actually I could get a good sellable shirt by reducing my white base by 15% on that specific design because it, it prints a very heavy white base. Wow. But here's uh, $7.47 with wow. the settings maxed out. So by maxed out, you, you've increased the level, the density, and the saturation, and the, the speed. You're, you're actually doing what, 16 passes of color? Uh, 16 passes of color, eight passes two times with the white, and considering, keep in mind, with the white ink, you're running four channels. And just that's, like when you do like your four, nozzle check, down you a lot of ink. four nozzles running white ink, so. Yeah. Uh, you're so it's not down quite a bit of white ink. So let now, me put you on. That, the, hold on, hold on. Let me put you on the spot. Let me put you on the spot. Speak the it. truth based on your experience. Are you are you seeing these settings and hearing these complaints because people are trying to overcome a cheap T-shirt? Part of it, and part of it is some of. Uh, I do watch a lot of YouTube and see a lot of people putting bad information out there. Misinformation is the killer. I got to tell you, how many times have we seen that, Jeff, on a forum or on our own webpage or on Facebook where people have just like, no, you got to do it this way. And it's like, based on what? Yeah. Yeah. And it really reverts back to proper pretreatment and proper fabric uh, on the shirt. And, you know, people throw out names and I always tell people, you know, Bella Canvas, Next Level, you know, Cotton Heritage, they're, they're some of the top of the line shirts. But at the end of the day, when I say those names, that doesn't mean every shirt from that manufacturer. Of course not. You need to look into it yourself. Bella Canvas has actually a YouTube station that they dedicate to the DTG marketplace on certain types of products that they produce for that market. Yeah. And I tell people, if you can't get a good answer from your major supplier, pick up the phone and call the, uh, the salesperson directly uh, at Bella Canvas and say, hey, I got some questions. I want to know what are your best shirts for DPG? Yeah. Or, or Sanmar or Cotton yeah. Heritage well, or Next Level. Sanmar is a distributor. 
And if you're talking to customer service, you're not going to maybe get those answers. Roy, they, they also make their own shirts. They actually have their own brands that they are. Oh, well, that's end, true. Yeah. End to end a provider of, and they do have high quality garments that do DTG printing really, really well. This is not a commercial for Sandmar. It's just no. trying to help teach people that there are some really good options out there with affordable shirts that are significantly going to, to handle and, and take a better print. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they have a, one of their private labels, they have a fan favorite that prints fairly well. They also sell a product called District that prints fairly well. And what I mean by fairly well is the colors look good. They pop off the shirt. I mean, you definitely want something that doesn't look uh, like it's been washed 30 times already and the colors are already dingy on them. So... So Jeff, do you see the question from Mike Enriquez? That's a really good question, and we get that. Typing the answer. <laughs> Let's. Huh? I guess we can just cover that for everybody. There's a lot of talk online about how Garment Creator uses more ink than third-party rip software. Is there any truth to this, uh, Roy? What's your experience on that? I, I have my take on it, but I'd yeah, like my to, uh, my experience. It. If you understand how Garment Creator works and you have a good shirt to begin with. Again, it goes back to the shirt. You're, you can put as little ink as possible and get a good print. As you mentioned before, putting more of a white base may not do anything for you. I mean, it may just, uh, it could add a problem at some point. Yeah, it could be the white base is not drying sufficiently or setting up on the shirt, yep. then the color ink coming down on top is going to go into that white if you don't have a pause or a dwell time for that ink to start setting up. So that's critical. So I always like to have enough white ink to cover the shirt and also have the ability to have that white set up as quickly as possible. And sometimes just going with the standard setting on the white bases, uh, I would change that down below, and I'm going to go through that a little bit too. Well, what's I know Jeff? That we're Jeff, what's your a little bit of time? But this is the most important area of. Okay, the well, program. let's let's get to that next, Jeff. What's your answer to that? The the talk and the chatter about no, yeah. no, no, you've got to have a rip software. I would say I would say the answer to that is, if you say that you're going to save me money by putting less ink on the shirt, the quality of the image is going to suffer because of that. So. I don't know if their estimation software is not giving as accurate results, but if you're getting a vibrant print, you got to put a certain amount of ink on that shirt, period. You have to consider the source of where that information comes from. So if it's, you're hearing that from people who um, always have RIP software and have invested a lot of money in it, they're going to buy into that because they've invested in it. And the truth is that it takes a certain amount of ink to make a print look good and there's no way around it. You can program software to estimate whatever you want. I mean, that's just programming, right? Right. So they can make it look like it's saving you more, but in the end, you're putting down the same amount of ink to get the same results. So that's my take on it. In three and a half plus years that I've been selling Epson printers, I've had one client purchase the, uh, an extra RIP software to go with their printer and never had anybody else call me and say, I need better results because Garment Creator does a fantastic job. Well, listen, let me, before Roy moves forward, let me, let me brag on you guys, first of all. Jeff, number one from sales, you're setting a proper expectation. You're, you're, you're explaining to someone that maybe is a novice to this, maybe is a screen printer, maybe they're embroiderers, maybe they're digital printers, but they haven't had the experience on this. So why would you want to take on another thousand dollar prod product and software program that's going to be more complicated than garment creator? Even, even if the outcome was better, let's, let's just take this down the road of, of reality. If, if, if Jeff sets the proper expectation and then Roy does his killer epic training where he's going through one-on-one -on -one all of these settings with you, probably Roy, are you spending the greater part of an hour just in garment creator with people as you do your training? I'm estimating. I have no idea. Uh, no, probably Even more than that. Not. I would say I go as long as the customer wants to go. I would say anywhere between two and a half and three and a half hours just on garment creator. And my point that is, is, is that printing shirts as well. Yeah, you're, you're, you're live. You're printing shirts and you're going through the process. You're going end to end. 
where the mm -hmm. where you're importing, you're you're doing everything seamlessly, and you're giving them the pricing estimates and the settings, and then you're actually printing. My point is that the training that you're getting from Equipment Zone is going to cover all of this, so that you're not going to fall into that trap. And I'm and I have no issue with third-party RIP software. There are probably times, and and we, they can probably show us some some areas where where they are getting a, a, a better print for slightly well, less. The other thing is a lot of our cons uh, competitors, not to bash anybody, but they tend to install the printer and set up the software on the computer and say, okay, it's all linked up, you're ready to go. And so you can download the Garment Creator, which is outdated on uh, Etsy's web or website or YouTube station and uh, say, here you go. So anyway, I just wanted to show you at the level three on this shirt was $3.65. Remember I maxed it out and it yeah, was it was over seven dollars. Seven fifty or sixty or something. So huge difference. Uh, almost four dollar difference. And this particular setting three prints superb for this design. Uh, if I go to level two, uh, I'm reducing the amount of color on it. It's not going to make that big of a difference, but uh, the white base is still the same as the level three. So the Rick, I'm looking at Rick's comment. So that's uh, 358. Didn't make that big of a difference. So for a 10 cent difference, I would just go with the level three. Uh, color ink is not that expensive. Like the white ink is where you're really going to see the difference. Let's say on this one, I know that the white base uh, prints heavy. I can go 15% less white on this one just because I know that it does uh, print heavy on the white. If I'm doing a lot of these shirts, say I'm gonna do 20 or 30 of them, obviously uh, a savings is gonna make a big impact when you start doing a big, uh, bunch at a time. So gotcha. I think this one's gonna get me down under $3. So Marcos, Marcos made a good point in that there are gonna be certain times and he's using a third party ink. So that's a whole nother game that we're not prepared to go into. There could yeah. be some benefits to my point. There may be some certain situations where you're trying to delete a white ink. You don't even want there to be, you wanna you want to really cut back on the amount of white ink underneath. And mm -hmm. there could be some finer controls. We, we get that, we're not arguing with that. We're just saying, why deal in the advanced major leagues when you haven't mastered the basics yet? You know, so let's master the basics yet. Use the software that came with it. Look at the prints we're getting for three years. For three years since I've been aware of the F2100 and watching what Equipment Zone has done, I can tell you I've seen print after print after print. I mean, from every kind of printer, from every kind of designer, vector art, graphics, uh, high-end photorealistic, photos, and the prints are impressive. I mean, show-stopping, people trying to take our samples. That's how good they are. Mm -hmm. And they're not doing anything different. They're not using some amazing setting in Photoshop. They're not using some insane rip software. They're using out of the box garment creator with appropriate training. So sorry to jump on my soapbox there, but I, I need to clarify something, Jay, you said third party ink. So I, I read Marcus's comment again. I think he meant third party rip software. Never put third party ink in your printer ever. Oh. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm glad you. I'm glad yeah. you clarified that. Agreed. Definitely not. Agreed. Okay, so, so we're we're kind of starting to run out of time. I'm not trying to. Yeah, I'm going to uh, blaze questions. through the rest of this okay. real quick. Which the most important is really up here, and then the ink density. If you're going to make some changes, but let me just cover this advanced um, print direction. Obviously, uh, color profile, uh, which is really what this is. Um, most people leave it on auto unless you're into high-end color and you create your own profiles. You can tell uh, Garment Creator where to find those profiles. Pause between passes. If you're doing a level six or doing a lot of white ink, uh, and there's, there might be situations where you want to do extra white ink to get uh, a nice base of white to do a nice photograph and get that more of the... Uh, Plastisol uh, silk screen fill on some big white type or something. Um, but you definitely want to put a pause between your passes on there. 
typically anywhere between 30 and 60 seconds uh, when you're applying a lot of ink. You want to allow that white to start setting up, especially before you put any color down. Um, and then as far as print direction, bi-directional versus unidirectional, why would I need to change that? Bi-directional prints twice as fast. It's going to print with the head moving in both directions. Uni is going to go in one direction only. Now, if I'm printing on an uneven surface, I need to go unidirectional. Otherwise, I'm going to have an issue with my uh, print lining up from the head changing direction. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, well, we already covered that. And here's uh, any type of item that's not on a flat surface. So if I'm doing hats, I want to do unidirectional. If I'm doing shoes, shoes are not perfectly flat, the material. Uh, we get them as flat as possible on the platen, but that's another reason to go uh, unidirectional, as well as printing over a seam. Levi's sweatpants down the side, uh, where there's a seam on the side of the sweatpants, those are all good reasons, or a Levi leg, if you're going to do something like that, to go unidirectional. Uh, all right so then uh, moving on right along here to the ink density uh, you have the color density that you can increase um, and your white density that you can increase now the thing with the white density it's uh, on the default of zero if I went to 25% more white, um, the cost is almost going to be the same as leaving it at zero. So if we wanted to look at, uh, it may be a penny more or something like that, but it basically takes almost the same amount of ink and redistributes it. So uh, if you have a lot of color coverage of white ink in one area, it's going to take some of that away and redistribute it into the areas that it's a little bit lighter uh, as far as white ink goes. So let me uh, kind of show you that real quick so you get an idea. You know, it makes a ton of sense to me while Roy's transitioning. These are exactly the things that I would be experimenting with if I were a business owner and in production right now while things are slow. I would be doing exactly what Roy is doing is I would take a graphic, I would print it in these different print modes, I would put the pricing and the levels below it so that I could use this for training my own staff and as well as setting expectations with my customers. That's a great point, Jay. Cool. Thank so you. So here's I got, uh, I got two a great normal points print. This is a normal white base for this specific image. Now this is a pretty heavy white base uh, for normal. So that's why I said I've actually ran uh, images at 15% less white than this right here and have gotten an exceptional print. Here's 25% more white, but it basically, it's hard to see, but some of these heavier areas it takes some of that white and redistributes it everywhere else. So you're losing part of your grayscale. And as you move from there to 50% to 75 and then 100, the difference in cost you would think is tremendous, but it's not. Um, literally, when you go from 50 to 75 to 100, you're probably talking maybe 15 cents total for a size of job like that. It's not that big of a difference. And then uh, going back to okay. I can't just jump from screen to screen. Um, now the one thing to keep in mind is if you're typically adding white, I wouldn't add color. I would allow my white base to stabilize how my color is going to go down. Uh, typically tell people never add both, but I could always add color and, and reduce my white base or leave my white base alone, so to speak. Would these be situations, Roy, where you're experimenting, you're trying to figure this out ahead of time? Again, you're trying to set an expectation with a client that might be really particular, like if they were an artist or if they had a high knowledge of, you know, 
graphics and gradients and so on, you, you, you'd want to try to set the expectation. You might do this ahead of time, right? Well, typically, I tell most people, and in all honesty, the defaults of level three and level five are sufficient for most printing if you have a good quality shirt. Well, well you that's could just, important. No brainer. Just take a shirt out of a box, pre-treat it, throw it on the machine, and hit print. Uh, going through these settings are basically just showing you guys how you can manipulate a file, but by no means... Am I saying every job you open up, you're going to have to go and tweak it and do yeah. this? Yeah, man, I'm really glad you said that. That is definitely not the way to run a business. You want to okay. make it as simple as possible. And I always tell people at the end of the day, if you want to buy a, a cheaper shirt that doesn't hold the ink and pre treat as well, you're going to bang your head against the wall to try to get a good, good print at the lower settings. So you have to put more ink and more pre treat. And if you start out with a good quality shirt to begin with, then it's your your home free. I mean, you know, especially if you start hiring employees and you throw a guy in front of a machine and say, "Hey, I got a hundred shirts here. This is how you do it," and you just keep load and go, kind of thing. I mean, you don't want to spend too much time messing with all these controls. And I, you know, tell customers when we do training, we go through that process of what looks better. It's not necessarily putting more ink on the shirt to make it look better as well. So it's, it's having the right combination of everything. Now the white management, obviously we're gonna print the white, so under white is on. The reduced white area uh, defaulted to is, is good for mostly everything. I've only had to change it a couple times. But if I saw a slight outline around the image on one side, I could increase this number to three, four, maybe a five even, but you know, that's getting kind of high. It's usually a three or four at the max. But there are times when you also may lose detail because there's no white base to throw the color ink on. So you might need to reduce it down to one. And I have an example of a reason why you'd need to do that. Here, and back here. Jeff, can I print on 50-50s? Yes. Will I get the results of 100% cotton? You can print on anything, Jay, as long as it's flat. The question is, how will it look? <laughs> no, you're, you won't like the results. Um, you can print on it. It'll look muted. Uh, that's a longer discussion. But uh, Okay, perfect. I that. think pre uh, that can revert back to when we talk about pre-treating, too. But anyway, here's an example of my reduced white area. This is the standard default on the left, how I lose my, my handwriting serif there. And changing it from a two to a one, I ended up bringing that back. It also fattens up these little lines a little bit on the design, but uh, this is a good design to show that there. Um, so the benefit to here. us, the benefit what to us that? is that we, we have Roy on staff. So we're, we're grateful. We're uh, lucky um, that we've had you um, experiment and go through this so that you're able to show these examples and training. When, you, when we set up a new customer, these are some of the things that you're going over. Um, Jeff, we're kind of running out of time. I know there's been a lot of good questions. How, how would you like to answer the lot there's there's the over 30 questions in there will you be able to email some folks back is that how you want to handle that yeah i've tried to um answer a few directly while we were talking okay. here um i can email people what we can uh, you have any and um, then we can cover those um maybe let uh, me just go through a couple more things i'll try to keep it uh down to maybe a couple more minutes here but let hey, me Roy, just touch you're on, on the timer Roy. okay there you go because I want to cover the white shirt, which I didn't talk about. Perfect. Uh, I was down just here, ask you about that. this is a cool setting here. Uh, striking. If you don't have this tab right here, you need to update your garment creator. The older version doesn't have this tab. So people are manually going in and changing this. The only way to explain this in layman's terms is this is like your TV settings. You have your red, green, blue, contrast, saturation, brightness. But if you want to just try it out, see how it works. Level one is going to push shadows darker and uh, bright colors brighter. As you go to five, it pushes more into the highlight area. So um, if I take this 
picture, every time you click on it, it gives you a preview. You see the change in the colors there? Um, if on this specific one, I do print it at three and it gives me nice, sharp, and colors that pop on this specific uh, setting here. So uh, there are reasons why I use this. I probably use it, and you get used to it. It's not something you want to do all the time, but uh, let me show you a quick uh, difference on those real quick. And then, um, so getting down to, if you look at uh, this image and this image right here, this is a, a reason why it being a photograph, and this one didn't come out, it's kind of modeled a little bit, but this level three standard, and then this is a level five with the striking of three. So I get a little bit more uh, darkness in here, the blue's a little bluer, what have you. And on this specific print, it doesn't really do it justice either on these photos. I get more yellow and the brighter greens uh, doing the striking of four on this one. And the, the light up in the trees is a little bit more accentuated in this area. So anyway. Um, Excellent examples. Excellent, Roy. Thank one you. more yeah. thing. So getting back to the light garments real quick. So basically the light garments, same exact controls uh, when you're looking at it. Level two is the default. Again, that's the best level to print with. Uh, level three, if you're doing photographs, is a good alternative if you want a little bit more detail. Obviously you want a pre-treater shirt if you're doing that. And then uh, you, know, you can go as, as high as level four if you'd like to. But uh, typically, like I said, most of the ones that I do on light garments are at a level two. And then you have your bi-directional, unidirectional, media profile, pauses, uh, print options. Now in here, you have what they call a double strike print, which whatever setting up here, level two, it's going to come back and do a second pass and apply more ink to those areas, which gives you the ability to take a non pretreated shirt and give it a little bit more density so it's going to withhold uh, over the washing that you're going to give it. Um, as far as the ink blot reduction, I have a sample of that which I'll show you. But that's if you get uh, a lot of bright colors like yellow, orange, and blacks near each other, football colors, what have you. You're going to have that black ink bleed into that. so. What this does is uh, print the yellow down first, come back and print the other colors on top. And you would put a pause when you use this mode to allow that yellow to set up so you don't have that, uh, that ink. And then down here, you can add more density. Again, if you're not doing the double strike because you do an ink blot reduction, you didn't pre-treat the shirt, you could always add some more ink. And it's really insignificant on a uh, light garment shirt adding ink in, in price. It doesn't really uh, increase the price very much. Because you're only adding CMYK, you're not adding exactly. more white. Yeah. yeah, you're not adding the white base as well. And then the striking as well here as far as these settings. So let me uh, close by showing you the, um, the other pictures here. So if I go up so here's a difference in a level two standard on a white shirt um, than a level two double strike. You can see a lot more density. Now, the thing to keep in mind is if you don't pre-treat a light garment, when you wash it the first time, it's going to lighten up a little bit. So adding just a little bit more ink gives you the ability to have a shirt that's going to look good after the first wash. And then here is an example of the ink blot reduction. See how you see around the mouth here, yeah, yeah. Uh, and around the head, top of the forehead, where the eye is, where it's bleeding into the yellow. And actually, the yellow pops a lot more. I was just going to say that it almost looks is. brighter. Wow, that's a huge difference. I really like that. That's that's something new that I'm learning right now is this ink blot reduction. Yeah, Roy, you're blowing people's minds, man. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, so that's basically I'm not, it. That. I'm not just saying that because yesterday was 420. I'm saying okay. it. Because, <laughs> <literally>. <laughs> well, 
Well, there you go. So the only other thing I had some customers that were asking about the settings on uh, the 2000 series. They have all these same settings down below. The only difference is, is the uh, defaults. You basically have two settings on your default. You have your one, which is actually a higher um, quality than the level three. So you're not getting the highlight white, but you're still doing the eight passes on the base, but your quality on your color is eight passes instead of the four passes for the level three. So uh, there's really no way to reduce that down, sorry to say, but uh, you can go up to the double passes on the, uh, the eight. So I would say you're probably more apt to spend more money using uh, the 2000 settings because you'll tend to want to you know, increase your quality right away when in actuality the level one, which was the fastest setting before, is a higher level than the, it's more equivalent to the level five on the uh, 2100 series. Okay. All right. And that's basically it. I think that's a good stopping point there. We could go on for another hour, I'm sure, easily. Uh, there's a lot of questions here in the chat and in the q a i've copied the questions out of the chat because we can't see those after the webinar ends so all perfect i've copied those hopefully i can paste those into a word document you're the man i will sort through all these questions and and try to get back to everybody uh in a timely manner because there's a lot of great questions in here but uh jay you have our email and phone number up there if you want to contact us in, immediately you can get in touch with us uh, if I can share this, I will do that now and go to my second page here. Ta -da. How's that? So there you have the tech support phone number. You can call directly. What what will happen is we'll put you into the queue and Roy or Joey or Omar, somebody will get back to you right away. Um, if you'd like to reach out to me, that 201-824-2773 is my direct number that rings me directly and my email address so i would love to uh love to chat with you appreciate everybody who has commented yeah. and shared thank you roy for your time i know we could thank go you. deep on all of these settings i think you did a wonderful job yes to everybody this was recorded and will be posted on our website please go to visit our website and on our home page you'll see the webinars you can visit that previously recorded webinars. We have seven other webinars that we've done over the course of the last month. Some of them deal with marketing. Some of them deal with sublimation. Some of them uh, are, are specific to DTG printing. We have special guests. We'll have more coming. So that's, that's a place you're going to want to stay aware of and visit often. Also, Jeff, anything else to say about Equipment Zone? We're open. We're an essential business and we provide shipping. Is there anything there? I don't want to get too much of a commercial, but you probably have the details. Yeah, we are open. I've actually been very busy these last few weeks. And so don't hesitate to reach out. You can order through our online store or call us directly. So look forward to hearing from you. Roy, anything in closing? Uh, no, thank you all for attending. It's been a real pleasure. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. Signing off, this is Jay, Jeff, and Roy from Equipment Zone. We look forward to oh. seeing you on the other side of this event, whatever we're calling this coronavirus issue. Um, stay safe, wash your hands, be good, be kind. And I know, I know. Can I say one more thing? I know you mentioned uh, to call in for tech support and what have you, but if you're on the fence to buy a machine, you definitely want to get a hold of our uh, sales department as well. Oh, well, what a guy. Look at this guy. Huh? Hate that. And that's the phone number to do it. There you yep. go. So check All in right. with Jeff. And uh, don't forget that even if you have not purchased your printer from Equipment Zone, which we don't understand why, um, however you found it, however you purchased it, um, if you're the original owner for the life of that uh, printer, you, please just give us a call. We'll help you as much as we can, no matter what. Uh, you know, there might be some limitations there. I understand that. Um, but we'd rather be the good guys. and We'd rather give you some help and some love. We'll be straight with you. We'll tell you what we can do and what we can't do. Um, and, and try to get you back up and printing. So if you, if you thought that, oh, that's why people buy from Equipment Zone. Oh, that's why they're the number one reseller in the U.S. Now you know. So, all right. Goodbye, everybody. All right.
Thank you.